Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming out so early in the morning and joining us. Uh, I'm inspired by the conversation this morning for a number of reasons. Uh, so my day job, <laughs> which I do, is, is I oversee residential custody and detention programs for the Youth Services Bureau. And having done that for a number of years, I've seen a number of changes. So when I first started in the field, we used to call them remand centers. And they were there, they were detained with, with uh, I'll call it the good, good feel approach, okay? Because at that time, we didn't talk about best practices. We didn't talk about the, the research and the academic uh, commitment and implementations behind the things we do. So I can tell you right now, in Ottawa, the services, we do use a cognitive behavioral foundation. We do use skill development programs. Um, a few years ago, if you had asked me how many kids graduated or even got school credits, I couldn't tell you because we didn't count them because the kids weren't there long enough in order to su succeed getting a school credit. I can tell you right now, and I, I looked at the board yesterday, there's 845 school credits given since we counted just a couple of years ago as well as 15 graduates from high school have come out of our custody programs here in Ottawa. And when we do that, we celebrate. They have the gown, they have the hat, they do it all, okay? Because really, if you're gonna measure the pathway to success for young people, it is truly about how they feel, their perceptions at the end of the day. I wanna talk a little bit about the skill development program, because I only have a few minutes. A few years ago, we decided that we should be able to work with young people. We should connect them to jobs, pre, job readiness programs, community folks. And we started the idea that we'd build a little shed. A little shed with the uh, cooperation of the community who got right behind this little shed. We're going to fix some lawnmowers. What you're looking at behind me is a 4,000 square foot Tamarack Trades Training Center that was built on the secure custody site here in Ottawa. These, the chairs that you're seeing and the, and, and the pieces of, uh, so you're seeing a shed actually being built there for one of my other programs, but they're being done by the young people in, in custody. They're getting school credits, they're earning skills, confidence, they're also earning in, in, in the trade center the confidence and the comfort of working in any trade center. We went to the post-secondary educators, the colleges, and we said, if we put a graduate of ours into your program, what do they need to know? You know what they told, I was thinking it was gonna be math, it was gonna be all types of things. Post-secondary educators said, don't worry about that. If a young person, any young person can stay in a trade center for the first six weeks, be comfortable in that environment, be oriented, and start to work with the idea that they can have success, we can do the rest. So that's what the Tamarack Trades Training Center does. It's, it's pre-job readiness skills. I happened to notice that my youth employment counselor walked into the room, and I need to, to indicate, you can't do this without attaching hope for young people. And not all our young people come to us with a whole lot of hope in their kit bag, okay? But when they start to work in trade centers, when they start to work and sit down with their youth employment counselor and do job readiness skills, do the interviews, do the, re do the resumes, do the job applications. We've been very, very successful in helping young people. All thanks to folks in the academic world who told us that's what we need to do. In terms of some of the, uh, the movement forward, we're very, very pleased that our connection with the community, now we have employers coming to us and saying, hey, how, how do we work with you? How can we pick up one young person at a time coming out of your facility with a keen interest, keen commitment, and maybe we can do co-op, maybe we can do apprenticeship, maybe as a community, we can get behind some action. Fairly, fairly important, critical piece for a young person coming out. Because as already cited, we talk about housing, we talk about poverty, we talk about some of the, the, the issues that, that create young people very quickly when they leave custody, going back to the community, falling back into some of the shortcomings that they came from, some of the poor decisions that they were making. But here's an opportunity for them to move forward, have connection, start to work under apprenticeships, or pre-apprenticeships, because sometimes it's not about, they're not gonna be auto mechanics necessarily, or electricians, but they, they may be able to make enough money at a, 
entry-level job that they can now set up, pay their rent, make good choices for themselves, and move forward. The only thing else I'll say is you can't do this without having fun with young people. I've been in the field for a while, okay? And you've got to have fun, okay? You've got to motivate them differently. Because if you just think you're going to have young people who, who haven't had success walk into these types of structures without support and having fun and getting engaged and motivating them, that's why you need those young youth workers. You need the youth workers who are going to spend time, be respectful, work with them. Not only in my facility, and I see some colleagues in the audience, John Howard Society, certainly the support there, um, you, know, uh, you know, the Boys and Girls Club, you can I see a number of members in the audience. Because when young people leave custody facilities, they have to have the support to integrate back in, transition back in to the community. They need that support. So there's my challenge for us. We've got the residential stuff going. I think we've got the foundation moving ahead. But the real work is how we connect the folks, community supports, in a preventive way, in a diverse way, in terms of, of changing the way young people feel about support. It's not too long ago, the young, some young people left and they didn't know where they were going to be housed the next day. Now we already make applications for housing. We, we do it right in the process when they're with us. That's what we need to do more. But we need to break down the barriers of our, our supports in the community. If we do that, we have a better chance of making pathways for success for young people in our community. And I'm not talking about 15-year-olds. I'm talking about 20-year-olds. I'm talking about young men who ha can go out and meaningfully start to move forward. I think I said enough. I think you got my message. Thank you.